What I have here is the Creative Sound Blaster GC7. It's a game streaming USB deck and amp with programmable buttons and Super X5. Now, if that doesn't sound interesting, I don't know what does. So let's dive into the creative world of gaming magic once more, and this time it's the Creative Sound Blaster GC7. Now this is it, the latest and according to creative the greatest that gaming audio can offer. The website is very happy to tell you all about how good this device is. It's simple, it's intuitive, it's tilted and it has a mixer like design. It has game control to switch between game and the voice, it has quick and easy controls and it even has two DSPs. It has X5 Battle and Scout Mode. And last but not least, it has an Audiophile Class Digital to Analog Converter. There are three other siblings in this series. The G6, the G5 and the G3. Now I made a video about the G6 and the G5 and thought that the G6 was amazing. It's one of my all time favorite external sound cards. The G5 was horrible and the G3, well, it hasn't arrived in my lab just yet. Check out my video about the G5 and the G6 if you want to know more. So okay, this all sounds really cool and everything, but let's take a bit better look at the GC7. Let's take a look at the outside. The design is rather colorful and looks like something streamers could and would use. There are two large knobs on there. The left knob is for the volume and the right is for switching for the audio from the game to the voice in say Discord. On the bottom you can see four C keys which you can program yourself to whatever you want them to do. There is a mic mute button in the bottom right corner and in the center you can find five buttons which are used for surround, bass, super x5, treble and mic. Now this smaller knob is used for the level of, level of either of those five buttons. This way you have everything at your fingertips. On the front you can have a mic input and a headphone output. And on the left there are four indicators which will tell you which mode is being used. On the rear you have from left to right the line out, the mobile in, the gain switch, an optical output, a USB-C connector and a USB sorry and a connector for the input selection and an on and off button. Now especially this last thing is something that I really like because a lot of other sound cards just don't have an on off button anymore. Now the box says that you can use it with the PS4, the PS5, the Switch, the PC and the Mac. But you may have noticed there's one device missing, the Xbox. And this is interesting to see that the Xbox is present on the product page of Creative themselves. But what the status is of the GC7 in combination with the Xbox is not entirely clear to me. Now one of the key features is the Super X5, which is a way of recreating the audio as if you were in a professional studio with professional speakers. Now of course Creative wants you to think this is done by a super special chip, the Ultra DSP. But this is more for marketing than for the truth. Um, it did get a lot of accolades and prices, so a lot of my fellow reviewers thought it was the bomb. And my opinion, well, I'll tell you about it in a short while. The specification sheet on the website of Creative tells us a bit more about this device. The digital to analog converter is supposed to have a very impressive 125 decibel signal to noise and even a more impressive total harmonic distortion of 0,005%. The analog to digital convert is also very impressive. It has a dynamic range of 114 decibels and a total harmonic distortion of 0,0000, well, whatever, 6%. The overall dynamic range is 116 decibels. The gain switch on the back is for switching between whatever impedance your headphone has. Now, 32 ohms and 190 phones, uh, ohms is for the low settings, and 115 to 300 ohms is the high settings. The speaker output is indeed up to 24 bits and 192 kilohertz, but the headphone output is stuck at a mere 24 bits and 48 kilohertz. Now, that's something that the box doesn't say. 
A small addition is that 192kHz is for the speaker output when uh, all virtualization is turned off. The microphone by the way does support up to 24 bits and 192kHz when there's absolutely no need for this. So interesting numbers, but let's open this baby up to reveal what's inside. The GC7 was rather easy to open, whereas other devices are very hard to open, I got this one open in a matter of minutes. Now one thing that immediately got my attention was the back of the board. Now as you can see there was some white gunk on there. I think it's the residue left from the construction process and shouldn't bother me, but if you think otherwise let me know in the comments please. The website says that the GC7 is a game changer and in the way that the GC7 has a dual DSP. Well, to be honest, there's just one DSP with a digital to analog converter and the other one is just a digital to analog converter. Now the headphone output is handled by the SBAXX1, a DSP made by Creative themselves and is also present in the G5 and the G6. It's a pretty decent DSP deck combo, but do not have too many expectations for this deck by itself. It's only capable of handling up to 24 bits and 48 kilohertz. Then there's the second DSP, the x Ultra DSP. Now this isn't actually the DSP because that part is for the SBAXX1. No, the x Ultra DSP is actually the digital to analog converter and is a rebranded AK4377 made by AKM. Now the AK4377 AK is a high sound quality advanced deck with HP. And I think they forgot the words amp there because well it has an headphone amp. Now this is an excellent component that supports velvet sound which is a marketing term from AKM, which says uh, the, the digital to analog converter is built to reproduce and improve audio to its original state. The output for the AK4377 is used for the line out and not the headphone output. Now what else can be found on the board? Well, there is an ARM STM32F72, which is an ARM based controller. Nothing too fancy and we've seen this one in so many other cards. On board there is also a Bluetooth chip in the form of the Nordic NRF52810. But this Bluetooth option isn't meant for use with wireless headphones. No, the GC7 comes with Bluetooth Low Energy, which allows users to manage the device from a mobile device via the Creative app. But it would have been a cool addition that you could also be able to use your headphones, wireless headphones, by the means of Bluetooth, at least with a decent Bluetooth codec of course. Then there are two analog to digital converters on there. One is for the mic and the other one is for the line in. The ADCs used are the CS5361 and the CS5345, both from Sirius Logic. Now the 5345 is a 105 decibels dynamic range ADC with gain amplifier, so this one will be used for the mic input. And the CS4361 is used for the line in. Now, both of these are reasonable ADCs and do their jobs as it should. Then there's a tiny chip which is an X XTX. Now this shouldn't be confused with the XTX brand that you used to have. No, this is just a little bit of flash memory to house the firmware. And last but not least, there is the TIOA1AW7, which is a low distortion audio operational amplifier. Now, something that my fellow reviewers also say is that on board there is a Max 97220A headphone driver. Well, this op amp isn't that exciting, it's rather basic. It's supposed to be this little chip, but I just cannot find a part number compared coupled to any datasheet. But there are some indications that my fellow reviewers are, fine, are right. So there are some quality components on there, there are some mediocre com uh, components on there. And as always with Creative, I find it rather strange that there's a mix of good components with average ones, making the product appear to be excellent, but in reality it's a mix of average to okay-ish. So what does this do have to do with the driver interface? Well, not really, but I want to go to the driver interface. Let's take a look at that.
So let's start with this and with all the options that you have. You have some presets like effects of gaming, music, movies, uh, adventures, Apex Legends, well, all other games. Well, most of them I don't even play. Ooh, it has The Witcher. Um, you also have the, the Super X5 and you need to have the X Super X5 app installed on your mobile phone or it doesn't work. You have the Crystal Voice where you can have some noise reduction, smart volume, voice morphing, something that we all enjoy, a microphone equalizer. Here you have the mixer, which is kind of interesting because I always want to use the monitoring on the microphone. Well, sorry, my installation of this Windows 10 is technically in English, but somehow Dutch words seem to be thrown around the place. But this is the monitoring and this is your microphone, which I always like because you have your feedback of your own voice and you don't scream at the your microphone to your friends. You have a device mixer. Here you have the acoustics engine with the crystallize that I talked about. As always, I dislike the surround uh, sound. You have a bass, smart volume and dialogue plus. Now, this is also present if you're using your speakers. You have the scout mode and this is designed to help you here beyond what you can see such as footsteps, speech and weaponry handling acoustics characteristics without involving the use of explicit explicit frequency shaping for a complete gaming experience. So if you're playing, uh, let's say, uh, Tarkov, this will be very interesting. Here you have the C buttons, C1, C2, C3. And uh, you can choose whatever you want to use for them. Here you have the frequent uh, equalizer and which decoder you want to use for Dolby Audio. What is interesting to see is that for your headphone you can't go over 24 bits and 48 kilohertz, but for your speakers you can go up to 24 bits and 192 kilohertz, which is interesting to see. You can have all the different settings for your headphones or even just the line out and headphone if you want to use both of them. For your recording, you can have your microphone boosted all the way up to 192 kilohertz, which is something rather strange to have. And here in the settings, you can have the firmware. So this is the driver interface. It's a nice overview. It has all the buttons that you would want. It has all the features that you would want. Um, it, 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 it's just a nice thing that they built for a change because normally I'm not that big of a fan of the creative uh, driver interface, but nowadays creative, well, they've changed. Okay, and now for the listening sessions. Now, the most subjective part of every review. I want to make it as descriptive as possible so you can filter out what you find important when using a headset uh, to create your own opinion. But that opinion will be based on my experience. So I want to have a good experience. Now, in the past, I used a couple of headphones and headsets, and one of them was the Sennheiser HD 429. Um, but now I have to say goodbye to my trusty Sennheiser. Um, it has, my has been my default headphone for some years now, and I love it. But it's getting too old and too worn, and I find that some are just better. So I've chosen a successor. Today I would like to say that I thank you to Sennheiser and welcome this headphone. It's the Audio Technica ATH-MSRB7BBBR7. Now, the, that's all said and done, let's head over back to the GC7. There are two things I want to say. When listening to the GC7 in neutral mode, so with everything off, the audio was okay-ish. I wasn't blown away, it wasn't like the audio was being produced without any vision. It was. Um, I did hear that the sampling frequency was kept at 48 kHz because it lacked precision, it lacked life. So my overall experience is that it was adequate at best. Now when switching over to the line out, the audio quality improved a bit. It had a bit more life to it. The experience was, well, somewhat better. 
But your line out isn't designed for your headphone and the improvement wasn't that impressive. So I switched back to the headphone output of the GC7. Now in my recent video about the XY Elite Pro I said CMSS 3D is a way of converting stereo or 2D audio into 3D audio and the 24-bit crystallizer is a way of upscaling your audio to better fidelity. Now these last two methods are things that I've never been a big fan of. And I was expecting this to be true for the GC7 as well, but I was wrong. Maybe this is a better implementation of the crystallizer. Well, anyway, it worked great. It really lift, lifted up songs. And on the one hand, I was happy about it, but as a purist, I was also a bit worried. It felt like cheating, like masking a nasty scratch on your car with cheap paint. Now let's talk about the Super x -Fi. Now, as I said before, this is meant to recreate the audio as if you were listening to music with prof a professional speaker setup. And it does this pretty good. I mean, I really felt like it was coming from speakers. Now, in order to enable this, this you, make, uh, you have to make some pictures of your ears and so you can create the optimal settings for your type of ears. Now, as always, you need to create an account to use this. Now, I understand the ID behind this and it does work, but I just, well, just sort of don't like it. It's not, I don't think I'm going to use it. Oh, and by the way, this uh, creative said that this isn't meant to replace DTS or Dolby or anything. It's just an addition to recreate audio to a more lifelike setting. Now when playing games, the GC7 was doing a better job. The audio was pleasant when gaming. I could hear my friends very good. The footsteps were nice, the explosions were cool, and everything was, well, even a bit more precise. If my friends talked too loud with a simple twisted knob, I could fix it. There was a slight delay. My voice was slightly faster than the headset we produced. Now, this isn't something that my system is to blame. I don't have any issues with any other device, say a SteelSeries RTX Pro with the Game Deck. Now, this delay is very slight and it needs some getting used to. I found that the crystallizer mode, uh, of which I'm so enthusiastic when I'm listening to music, when playing games it made audio just a bit too pompous. So turning it off with the help of a C button was very easy. So what about the Rightmark score? Do they support what I heard? Well, I did three tests. One with the headphone output, and one with the line output, and one with the game mode preset enabled. Now, let's start with the last one, the game mode. This will give you a general performance of poor, not the greatest score I've ever seen. And when you see the graph for the frequency response, you can see why. It's all over the place. Now, what makes it interesting is that the bass is higher, uh, the basses and the higher frequencies are amplified enormously, which makes sense. You do want to hear the footsteps of your adversary and amplifying those pre frequencies is a good way to do just that. Now, when looking at the headphone output, the general score at least got an average. And this time the frequency response is doing what it's supposed to do, while the other ratings, well, they get a poor. I'm rather worried by the stereo crosstalk getting a poor because general large devices do not suffer the same as the smaller de devices uh, suffer from this. When we look at the score of the line out, the stereo crosstalk even gets a very poor, but overall manages to get an average. Now I experience a sort of an improvement switching from the headphone to the line output, but Ride Park doesn't support that at all. The scores are nearly identical with the headphone output just being ever so slightly better on every single front. And now for my conclusion. Overall, when you want to listen to music, this just isn't the device for you. There isn't any noticeable improvement of your onboard system, your onboard codec, so it's just uh, really expensive and there's it just, just isn't for you. On the other hand, the GC7 is a very good external sound card for gaming and I would even recommend getting it despite the scores that it gets in Rydmark Audio Analyzer. Now if you can find it second hand, well, you should definitely get it. The additional features, the large knobs, the ease of use, the C buttons, 
And well, sort of also the audio quality when gaming made it that I even replaced it with the SteelSeries game deck that I had used thus far. But this is this only a recommendation if you play with friends and use Discord. If you just play games by yourself, this is still a very costly device that doesn't really improve your audio. It's just the ease of use with Discord. So with this ending, I would like to thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. And I would like to see you in the next one. See you then. Bye bye.